Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our risen Lord and Good Shepherd, Jesus Christ. Amen. The word of God I would lay on your hearts today comes to us from Psalm 119, verses 161 through 176. We read. Princes persecute me without cause, but my heart stands in awe of your words. I rejoice at your word like one who finds great spoil. I hate and abhor falsehood, but I love your law. Seven times a day I praise you for your righteous rules. Great peace have those who love your law. Nothing can make them stumble. I hope for your salvation, O Lord, and I do your commandments. My soul keeps your testimonies. I love them exceedingly. I keep your precepts and testimonies, and for all my ways are before you. Let my cry come before you, O Lord. Give me understanding according to your word. Let my plea come before you. Deliver me according to your word. My lips will pour forth your praise, for you teach me your statutes. My tongue will sing of your word, for all your commandments are right. Let your hand be ready to help me, for I have chosen your precepts. I long for your salvation, O Lord, and your law is my delight. Let my soul live and praise you, and let your rules help me. I have gone astray like a lost sheep. Seek your servant, for I do not forget your commandments. This is the word of God. <clears throat> Dear friends in Christ, fellow redeemed, lost is a word that we don't really like to use that often, and maybe we don't use it all that more very often. If your smartphone is charged and you have a pretty decent 4G signal, it's hard to get lost these days in our country, isn't it? Especially in a big urban area like where we live. In a spiritual sense, we don't really like to use the word lost either, do we? At least not of ourselves. True, we sing in the hymn, Amazing Grace, I once was lost, but now am found. What about now? As sheep in the fold of Jesus, the Good Shepherd, do we still find ourselves getting lost sometimes? Today our text is from Psalm 119. It's the longest chapter in the entire Bible. 176 verses. And we are studying the last 15 today. And the theme of this psalm is not easy or not hard to miss. The theme is God's holy word and the riches and the truths found therein. Just look at these 15 verses that we're studying here today. Did you notice how many times God's word is referenced in there? Just look at it. His word, his law, his righteous rules, his commandments, his testimonies, his precepts, his statutes. I counted 18 references in just these 15 verses to the importance of and the holiness of God's word. And yet, after all this, after the psalmist spending so much time confessing how faithful, how dedicated he is to God's holy word, in the very last verse of this incredible chapter, he confesses, I have gone astray like a lost sheep. Even this faithful writer must admit that at times, he still needs the good shepherd to seek him, and to provide him with his guiding word. Today is Good Shepherd Sunday. It's a day when we focus a lot of our attention on that biblical illustration of Jesus being our shepherd and us being the sheep. It's a rich illustration. We've been drawing attention to it all service in our hymns and in our Bible readings. And as we read in our gospel lesson today, the Good Shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. In Psalm 23, we read about how the Good Shepherd leads us and restores us, he comforts us and anoints us. And in our text today, we're going to read and study about how the Good Shepherd guides us. We read about the guiding word of the Good Shepherd. The guiding word which brings peace from evil's persecution, and it brings relief from sin's crushing weight. Peace is probably not something that comes to mind when you think about persecution, does it? 
when I think about persecution, my mind conjures up images of arrest, of murder, physical violence. I think about our Lutheran brethren overseas in India who are facing the anti-conversion legislation in their country, which has just been made law. Or I think about the apostles like Paul and Peter, Thomas and Andrew, Philip and Nathaniel, James, many of whom, according to church tradition, were martyred for their faith. But the psalmist here, he writes in the very first verse of our text, he says, Princes persecute me without cause. What about us? Do we still face persecution to our faith? Well, we're not being beheaded, are we? We're not getting thrown to lions. We're not being thrown in prison. In our country, it's legal for us to be Christians. It's legal for us to preach the gospel, to unleash the Holy Spirit, and hope that he converts others to Christianity. So we don't want to miss all the things that we have to be thankful for, and we sure don't want to pretend that everyone is out to get us. But having said all that, we don't want to minimize the extent either to which the Good Shepherd and us, the sheep, are facing increasing intolerance in our country. Jesus told us in John 15, verse 20, he said, A servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. The Apostle Paul wrote in 2 Timothy 3, 12, Indeed, all who desire to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. It's something for us to expect. It's something for us... To think about, maybe even spend some time on, but it's not something for us to worry about. Worrying is something that sheep tend to do a lot of. Did you know that there's actually something called sheep worrying? It's a real thing. It's a dangerous thing, in fact. In fact, in some countries, if your dog is accused of sheep worrying, you can actually go to jail for it. Because sheep worrying is a serious thing for sheep farmers. Especially during lambing season, it can cause serious damage. If a dog or a coyote or a wolf runs after a sheep, sometimes the stress and the anxiety caused by that chasing will be so powerful on the sheep that they'll actually fall over dead. They will worry to death. Three years ago, there was a really famous account of it happening in, in uh, South England, where one farmer lost 116 sheep in one day from sheep worrying because they'd been chased by dogs. It kind of adds a whole new dimension to the whole sheep and shepherd illustration, doesn't it? Maybe we don't face that persecution of physical violence in our country, but we sure do face the fear and stress of worrying. We do plenty of that, don't we? Look at the frightful persecutions that Christians do face in our country. People are being fined. People are losing their jobs. There's lawsuits. There's public disdain public disdain. These things aren't figments of our imagination. And there's no amount of PR work in the world that will help some people, that will rescue the church from being thought of by some people as backwards or bigoted. That's the old evil foe. He wants us to scare us into submission. He wants us to worry. He wants us to be afraid to stand up for the truth of God's guiding word. And so does our sinful flesh. Our own flesh is working to drive us away from the shepherd's guiding word. Think about how dedicated this psalmist was to spending time with God's word. And then compare it to ourselves. He says, my heart stands in awe of your words. Do I do that? How often does my heart stand in awe of God's word? Not as much as it should. He says, I rejoice at your word. Do I do that? Not as much as I should. He says, I hate and abhor falsehood. Not as much as I love falsehood. Not as much as I am attracted to my pet sins and the little white lies that we tell. The psalmist says, seven times a day I praise you. Is that me? Again, I find that I fall short. I don't praise God nearly enough as I should. I'm not even close to the faithfulness level of this psalmist, and yet he's the one who's saying at the end of all this that I've gone astray. 
like a lost sheep. So where does that leave me? Where is my peace amid persecution? I know that I sure don't deserve any. Well, there's only one kind of peace that can calm our frightened, stressed out, threatened, and worried and persecuted souls. That's the peace that comes from the guiding word of our Good Shepherd. Great peace have those who love your law. Nothing can make them stumble. The truth is that on our own, we don't want to have anything to do with God's law or with his instruction. But because the Good Shepherd has sought us and saved us, because he has sent the Holy Spirit to make us believe it, we have been found, we have been rescued. We've been made to love God's law, to work towards pleasing him. And we have that great peace. So we don't have to worry about being worried to death by our fear and anxiety like frightened sheep. The guiding shepherd's good word tells us so. A lot of times when these sheep would get very worried, they would go hide under bushes or in caves or in divots out in the landscape. And it would take a gentle, good shepherd to go out there. Do you know how he coaxed them back? With his word. Jesus does the same thing. He comes to us in his word. He coaxes us back out of our fear and worry and anxiety. He tells us like he did in our gospel lesson today. I am the good shepherd. It's okay. You can come out now. I lay down my life for the sheep. I know my own and my own know me. He tells us through the Apostle Peter in our Gospel lesson, You were straying like sheep, but now you've been returned. How? By the shepherd and the overseer of your soul who came to you and coaxed you back with his word. We're going to face persecution in this life, but we can rejoice like the apostles did who were counted worthy to suffer for the name of Jesus because we do have that peace of our sins forgiven. We have the peace that our good shepherd assures us of by his resurrection. We have the peace of a living Good Shepherd. Now that's why Good Shepherd Sunday falls into the Easter season. If he was a dead shepherd, he wouldn't do us any good. <laughs> but our living Good Shepherd, our risen, resurrected Shepherd, comes to us and promises us this peace. He gives it to us. And the peace of the knowledge of eternal life in heaven, where we will never be led astray again. But for now, we're still here in this earthly flock of Christ's church. And that means that like our ovine counterparts, we're constantly in danger of becoming lost. No matter how deeply you're invested in your faith, no matter how secure you feel in your devotional habits, no matter how much time you dedicate to God's word, the devil, he's always sending his dogs, his wolves, his coyotes to chase you down, to scare you, to nip at you because you are so precious to your Savior. He's trying to drive you back to spiritual death. The psalmist, he's not talking about being lost in the spiritual sense of losing his faith. He's talking about the feeling of feeling lost like any of us do at many times in our lives. He's talking about a specific situation where he's just asking for help. He's looking for relief from sin's crushing weight. Look at how he cries out in the second part of our psalm, second part of this text. He says, Let my cry come before you, O Lord. Give me understanding according to your word. Let my plea come before you. Deliver me according to your word. In our lives, when we sin, a lot of times when we encounter problems, our gut reaction is to hide it, to try to run away, try to figure something out, try to feel like, we're not worthy to bring these problems, bring these sins to God. We think, how can I get away with this? What do I have to hide? Where do I get rid of this sin? I know, I'll tuck it way back in this closet. Never talk about it again. But the truth is, when we hide these things, when we hide our sins, or when we hide our problems, they only accumulate. They don't go away. They're always there. A few years ago, there was a news story that came out of New Zealand. Maybe you remember hearing about it. It was about a sheep named Shrek. <laughs> Shrek the sheep. They named him that because he got famous after he was found in a cave after six years. Six years of living in a cave. Of course, during that time, Shrek's fleece had grown incredibly. <laughs> six years worth of fleece. When they finally found him and shaved him, they found that his fleece weighed 60 pounds. 
It was enough to make 20 men's woolen suits. And I gotta think it must have been a pretty miserable six years carrying around all that extra weight. He carried all that extra weight of fleece simply because he didn't have a shepherd, did he? Do you know how long it took his shepherd to shear him after he came back? 20 minutes. <laughs> Doesn't take very long to get rid of all those extra work burdens, all that extra weight. Fact is, sheep need a shepherd. They're created to need shepherds. That's how they are. And that's how we are too. We need that guiding word of our good shepherd. It brings relief from all that crushing weight. Life involves the accumulation of burdens, not just our sins, but also all the problems, all the baggage that comes from living in a sinful world. It weighs us down like 60 pounds of extra fleece. You don't have to carry it around. You don't have to hide in a cave. You can bring it. Bring it to your Savior Jesus. He's waiting. He's waiting to give you his guiding word. He's waiting to shear all that weight, all that guilt, all those problems, all that baggage off of you. And how does he do it? With his word, of course. We have these burdens. So we bring them to him. He's ready to shear it off, to relieve us of that crushing weight. And it doesn't take him 20 minutes. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive them. Right now. If we're looking for relief, if we're looking for rest, he's ready to give it to you. Right now. Your crucified good shepherd. He didn't remain in the tomb, and that's how we know all this is true. He rose as proof. That he truly does have peace. He truly does have relief for you and all the weight of all your sins. That salvation is yours. He's here to guide you with his word. He invites you. He coaxes you again. He says, come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my burden is light, and my yoke is easy. If you are crying out for deliverance, or longing for salvation from the troubles of this sinful world. We can follow the psalmist's lead. We can cry out to the Lord. Help us to understand this, Lord. Give us understanding according to your word. Give us deliverance according to your word. Because there's great reward in making the Lord's word a priority in our lives. Great spoil, he talks about. Righteous rule, great peace. His commandments are righteous and worthy of our praise. His law is our delight. These things spoil. Rule, righteousness, and delight, they're promised to you when you listen to and heed that guiding word of the Good Shepherd, which does so much for us. So even though we're, we are Jesus' little lambs, and we are in his flock, even though we gather here on Sundays as a flock of Mount Zion Lutheran Church here in Madison Heights, there's still going to be times when we feel lost. Even the psalmist felt lost. Thankfully, we have that living Good Shepherd who never see, fails to seek and to save us, his chosen sheep. And he does so with his guiding words. And if we have any doubt about that, we can look to this section where, again, 18 times God's holy word is emphasized. The guiding word of the Good Shepherd, which truly brings us that peace from evil's persecution and coaxes us out of our worry. And it also gives us relief from our sin and all our burdens. And so we can go forward knowing that we have the Good Shepherd, the Good Shepherd of our souls. Amen.